The train is an hour late. Now I won't reach in time for my meeting. Trains are used to transport both humans and freight. However, we often come across instances when trains don't reach their destinations on time. Animals have an inbuilt transportation system for carrying oxygen, nutrients and waste products. This system is referred to as the circulatory system and consists of the heart and a network of blood vessels. Unlike a train, the circulatory system cannot afford to delay the transport of any substance within a body. This lesson explains how various substances like blood and lymph are transported through the bodies of animals. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe the composition of blood Describe how blood vessels transport blood through the body Describe the composition of lymph Compare the structure of heart in different animals Explain the process of circulation of blood in the heart and define blood pressure. In Venice, a boat is the most important mode of transport. Venice is a city of canals where people use boats to travel from one point to another. In the circulatory system, blood is the most important mode of transport. Blood is a fluid connective tissue that consists of a fluid medium called plasma in which red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are suspended. Plasma transports food, carbon dioxide and nitrogenous wastes in dissolved form throughout the body. Oxygen is delivered to the tissues by a pigment called hemoglobin that is present in red blood cells. The unit of measurement for hemoglobin is gram per deciliter of whole blood. In newborn babies, 17 to 22 gram per deciliter of hemoglobin is present. For children, the normal range is in between 11 and 13 gram per deciliter and for adults, it is between 12 and 18 gram per deciliter. An adult male has a hemoglobin level between 14 and 18 gram per deciliter and in adult women, it is between 12 and 16 gram per deciliter. The normal range of hemoglobin is not the same for all animals. In cattle, for example, the range of hemoglobin is between 8 and 19 percent, which is quite different from that of human beings. The city of Venice has an extensive network of waterways that allow boats to move around freely. Similarly, blood is transported from one part of the body to another through an intricate network of tubes called blood vessels. Blood needs to be pumped through the blood vessels for it to reach each and every tissue in the body. This function of pumping is carried out by the heart. Blood vessels are comprised of arteries and veins. Arteries are the blood vessels which carry oxygenated blood away from the heart to various organs in the body. When the blood flows out from the heart, it is at high pressure. To withstand this pressure while transporting the blood, 
the walls of the arteries are thick and elastic. On reaching an organ or tissue, the artery divides into smaller vessels so that the blood can reach each individual cell. The smallest vessels have walls which are one cell thick and are called capillaries. The thin walls of the capillaries allow oxygen and nutrients to pass from the blood into the tissues and waste products from the tissues into the blood. The capillaries then join to form veins that carry the blood away from the organ or tissue. Veins collect blood from different organs and transport it back to the heart. As compared to arteries, veins have thinner and less muscular walls. This is because the pressure of the blood that they carry is much lower than that carried by arteries. Due to the same reason, veins have valves that allow the blood to flow only in one direction. This ensures that the flow of deoxygenated blood is one way only towards the heart. If a blood vessel ruptures or gets cut, blood leaks out and results in bleeding. This makes blood flow out of the body. Alternately, the blood may flow out through a break in the blood vessel and stay within the tissue spaces. Both these cases could prove to be fatal. In addition, Bleeding results in low pressure in the blood vessels which affects the working of the heart. Platelet cells in the blood act as a defense against bleeding. When a blood vessel ruptures, platelets form a blood clot at the point of injury and help to plug the leak. The circulatory system also uses lymph or tissue fluid to transport substances through the body. Blood supplies nutrients to the tissues and collects the waste products which do not get absorbed by the tissues. The waste product and any excess fluid diffuse into the intercellular spaces of the tissues and then form the tissue fluid or lymph. Lymph is similar to the plasma in blood, but it is colorless and contains less protein. Once lymph is formed in the intercellular spaces, it drains into lymphatic capillaries. Lymphatic capillaries join to form larger lymph vessels that finally open into larger veins. The veins ultimately carry the lymph back into the blood. These white lines on the road are called dividers. They are used to separate incoming traffic from outgoing traffic. Similarly, the heart has specific chambers that prevent oxygenated blood from mixing with deoxygenated blood. The heart is a muscular organ which is about the size of our fist. The structure of the heart is not the same in all animals. Fishes have two chambered hearts that have one ventricle and one atrium. The deoxygenated blood from the ventricle is pumped into the gills where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. The oxygenated blood then passes to the rest of the body and eventually returns to the atrium. Thus, blood circulates through the heart only once in the cycle. Therefore, this type of circulation is known as single circulation. 
Fishes are able to extract 80% of the oxygen contained in water passing over their gills. Human beings, on the other hand, can extract only about 25% of oxygen from inhaled air. Amphibians and reptiles have three chambered hearts with two atria and one ventricle. Blood from the right atrium flows to the lungs where the exchange of gases occurs. Blood then returns to the left atrium. This oxygenated blood and some deoxygenated blood flows from the atria into the ventricle and passes through to the rest of the body. Eventually, the blood returns to the right atrium of the heart. The disadvantage of a three-chambered heart is that oxygenated blood mixes with deoxygenated blood as there is no mechanism to keep them separated. Although fish have a two-chambered heart, most of the oxygen required by the body is extracted by the gills. All birds and mammals have four chambered hearts that contain two atria and two ventricles. The atria and ventricles are completely separated so that oxygenated blood does not mix with deoxygenated blood. Since oxygenated blood is segregated, it allows an efficient supply of oxygen to the body. This is useful in warm-blooded animals like birds and mammals who constantly use energy to maintain their body temperature. Blood flows through the heart twice during each cycle in vertebrates like amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. So this type of circulation is known as double circulation. The heart is supplied with valves which allow blood to flow in only one direction from the auricle to the ventricle. These valves prevent the blood from flowing back. Let's take a look at how the heart works in detail. Deoxygenated blood flows from the body to the right atrium of the heart, which expands to collect blood. The right atrium then contracts, and at the same time, the right ventricle dilates. This transfers blood to the right ventricle. The right ventricle in turn contracts and pumps the blood to the lungs for oxygenation. Since ventricles have to pump blood into various organs, their walls are thicker and more muscular than those of the atria. Valves present in the ventricles and atria ensure that blood does not flow backwards during contraction or expansion. Blood is oxygenated in the lungs and is carried back into the left atrium of the heart. The left atrium relaxes when it is collecting the blood from the lungs. It then contracts while the left ventricle expands so that the blood is transferred to it. Now the muscular left ventricle contracts in order to pump blood to all parts of the body. Deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body flows into the right atrium of the heart once again. This is how the heart helps in the circulation of blood. The body of a truck is equipped so that it can handle the stress exerted by heavy loads. Similarly, blood vessels are equipped to handle the pressure exerted by blood against their walls. This force applied by blood is called 
blood pressure. This pressure is much greater in arteries than in veins. The pressure exerted by blood against the wall of the artery during ventricular contraction or systole is called systolic pressure and during ventricular expansion or diastole is called diastolic pressure. The normal systolic pressure is about 120 millimeters of Hg and diastolic pressure is 80 millimeters of Hg. An instrument called a spigmomanometer is used to measure blood pressure. High blood pressure is also called hypertension. It is caused by the constriction of capillaries of arteries called arterioles. This results in increased resistance to blood flow. High blood pressure can lead to ruptured arteries and internal bleeding.